I think we're working again. Man, sorry, that was tough to find. Tough to find that old 1.0 version of Game Show. But yeah, okay, I just reinstalled my streaming software, basically. Sorry, everybody, for the delay here and everything. But yeah, I restarted the stream and reinstalled this older version of Game Show, which is my software. What's up, guys? Yeah. So um, now we're now we're running it. Game Show is only using seventy percent of the CPU instead of hundred and seventy. <laughs> Same exact settings, but just an earlier version of this software. Super buggy version one point one of. Anyways, sorry about that. Stuff like that makes me gripe, and I've been griping, griping too much, too much griping going on. Get this unplugged. Let's get back to developing the freaking game, huh? All right, all right, all right, all right. We were at this point where we we're, yeah. Kill the enemy. Let's try to play in that again. I wanted the health to be a little bit further spread out. Run. Run game. Run! Instead of this whole life pack item, which kind of, I'm not really liking how that, that life is being placed on the ground all at once. And so the whole concept, I think, is just a bad concept. But this is a better concept using, um, using the actual explosions and all the timing of them to place one health here, one health there, another one there, another one there. So every time that every time there's an explosion, there's just more health, more health, more health. So that'll look a lot more natural. And besides, then Jib won't have to scan it, and it won't look weird. So okay, back to this Ros mini bot. Uh, no, the story. We want to turn off this life. I'm probably gonna remove this life pack item. Let's. Oh, I'm just gonna do that right now. No more life pack. All right, this stuff can be say the same for now. And when we do all these boss explosions, here, explosion size, we get an explosion size, we remove the components. Later on, we do all these explosion effects. Here's where it does all these small explosions. Create some sparks, some blood, and let's create some items. So we need to get the world's current area. World area. What's up, Jaylis? How far has the game come? Uh, a year. Yeah, it's been a year now. But yeah, you mean lately? Lately, I've been doing a lot of cool stuff. Here's uh, some mock-up art. I'm going to be implementing this new bot dungeon where it's a secret optional dungeon. You have to It's a secret to be able to even get there. And you gain these abilities and fight this guy. Nice. 
Yay. Hats and jibs. World area. What happened to this? There. World area. Create item. Okay, item life. Add position. Cool, this is actually a pretty good position. Except for the Y, we probably need to mess with that. Nice man, yeah. So I'm working on a lot of data to get that, to make that whole dungeon easier to implement and it'll make every other dungeon I implement even easier. So that's gonna be cool, but I'm kind of taking a break from that programming today and working more on this this first boss at the beginning of the game. Nice rocket bunny. Wow, good for you, man. It's like your first day using it. Right on, man. Good for you. So the area, X is going to be the area size of a tile. So get tile size. Plus or minus. Do I have an idea for using BSP tree generation in C++? Sorry, what's a BSP tree again? Oh, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't use Safari. It's been crashing on me every stream. So anyways, I have to, uh, I can't really look up what BSP trees are. So you're going to have to tell me if you want some. I help some ideas or help with that. So yeah, I'm lo I'd love to help out, but tell me more about your situation. What's a BSP tree? What do you want to do with it? What specifically are you doing? You know? There, so every time it does an explosion, it should leave some health. What's up, PMC? <laughs> How you doing, man? What's up? Lee Champ. Look at that! That's kind of cool. Oh, I really want to hear that. <laughs> oh, dude, I like that. Let's do that again. Do it again! Do it again!
Nice, 1,300 followers, really? Sweet, thanks, man. I didn't know it was all that high. Oh. Huh. Okay, I get you on what a BSP tree is now, but I have no idea how, what, I mean, what engine are you even using? Yeah, sorry, I don't, I don't know if I can help you out here. I think the best advice I could give you is just to, to um, you know, just code enough until you get to the point where you got all the information on the problem that you got, that you can, you know, and then relax until you think of an idea. Oh, it's your own. Okay. What's it, what's it, why aren't they showing up on the screen then? You know? What if these were thrown out a little wider? Yes, go overboard with it. I love this. Yeah, that was too much. Maybe more like zero point Yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, right. Cool. Okay. Good. 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 Okay, let's get put this guy back to having full health. I guess maybe the one thing that might be cool is if they do a little bounce. That's doable. It would look. It would look pretty neat. A little tiny bit of balance going on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you'll get it, man. You'll get it. Sorry I'm not much help here, but you'll get it. So, because I'm so confident you'll get it, I'm going to say congratulations on getting it fixed now. Right? Congratulations, man. You fix your problem. Sometime in the future, you will. Whether that's from now or now or behind now, does it matter? Whiz hats all over the place. Three whiz hats. The what's there's a system that drops items that bounce and that's when trample uh, it's the trample system move system trample 
drop an item. Yeah, we might as well make this flexible. So in the create item function, I can add just a single variable that says um, how much jump to add. What's up, bit of Barney? Everybody, everybody gets a hat. Here, here, here. Hat, 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 hat. Hats to the whole chat. Hats to the chat. Thank you, chat. Hats, hats. Have another hat. It's on me. <laughs> that makes me want a beer all of a sudden. I have a strong desire for a beer right now. Hmm. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. That's a cool hat. Oh, that's the other hat. Right, right. Yeah. We need, we get, dude, we need more hats. There's, there's got to be more hats to be added to this thing. Two hats is not enough. This guy's got a hat, but it doesn't count. It's not like a hat we can just pass out. Okay, so I'm making this create item function a little smarter so we can bounce. Load height, bounce, bounce strength, bounce height, bounce height would be all right. Like, that'd be nice to pass it like two. I wanted this thing to bounce in the air about two pixels. Doesn't have to be exact. But basically, that, that'll help. And a jib stash. Oh, we need the jib stash. That's right. That's, that's probably more important than more hats. We need stashes, especially jib stash. So float bounce height, bounce height, and then system. Right, here's where we create, this is where we choose what item to create. Here's where we get the item ID and do, do, do. do all this jumping out of the grass stuff. So we wanted to pass a bounce height of about three pixels, three, three bouncy pixels right here. Oh, wait, wait, no, this needs to be zero for the float height and then three for the bounce height. Yeah, and the bounce should only happen for items that are created without a float height. Bounce. Ba wow 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 wow. Ba bounce. Add component to the current ID or e dot ID. Actually, yeah. You can make this part of this system up here. Before, I mean, before we go, yeah, this should, this should be for every one of these. There. ID. Home at last. No more, no more Olive Garden.
Should I drink a beer right now? God damn. I really want a beer. Try not to focus on it. It's just gonna slow me down. Stupid beer. He is, he is. At least three years in the future. Drink tea? Ah, I've already had two teas, though. Dude, I had two teas before I started streaming. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some tea. Have some more tea. Botfu is here? Whoa, who's Botfu? Hey, guys. Okay, well if that works, then we should be able to still walk over grass and... It's a bot! <laughs> you made it? Nice. Oh, you were writing a bot during yesterday's stream? Uh... Dude, nice! Holy crap, Boogie, that's awesome! Yeah! What about Valtry? Ah, <laughs> nice! Nice! Wow, that's great, dude! I'm so honored! There's a bot that can do stuff like this? What about uptime? Is it legal writing bots? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you can write a bot. I think it, I think the problem comes when you start spamming people. That's when it gets like, you know, that's, that's when it gets bad. I think, I don't know. Don't take my word as, as like, Nice, cool. Oh, sweet. Oh, help. Yeah. Dude, that's so awesome. Yeah, dude, that's rad. Yeah. <laughs> What's Git? That's so awesome! <laughs> nice, man. Yeah, that's rad. Oh. I wish I had... Okay, I want... I want... I'm want. i gonna request a command. I'm gonna request a command that... Um, we need one for, oh, cool, dude. That's so rad. Um, okay, so request for a link to, um, uh, what's the, the extra credits. Let me post that link. I think I can, well, anyways. Oh, this is a risk, but I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try and open up that extra credits link. Oh, I hope this, if the stream crashes, I'm just gonna restart and start streaming right again, okay? So, but anyways, here's the link. It would be so great. So when people ask, hey, I want some advice, I'm a new game developer, I want, it, I want this link so easily accessible. That would be so cool. All the
there it is. You know, maybe that becomes a, 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 a YouTube link or, or something like that. <clears throat> yeah, that's so cool, man. Oh, oh, cool. It's even got Twitter and stuff and YouTube. Papu. Did he die? Did he go away? Did he crash? Oh, he killed it. <laughs> awesome, man. Oh, dude, it's so rad. This is the raddest thing ever. I mean, besides no pad minus minus. This is the raddest thing ever. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Okay. While while you're doing that, I'm going to check out this. Let's, make, let's see if these uh, items still bounce. Oh, I did a 3.0. Oh, and we got to put the player at the start. Botpo's here! Yeah, right on! Yes! Extra credit. Nice, cool. Yeah! All right! Now when people come on, they're like, Hey, I'm a new game developer. What should I, what, what should I do? They're like, watch these videos. They can explain it way better than I can. Oh, it's so awesome. Boogie, high five, man. Make a high five. High fives forever. Ah. I'm supposed to be here. Okay, yeah, yeah, it, it bounced. Bouncy, bouncy. Oh, that's because we're not using bounce height yet. What is Bucky Paper? You didn't get the link that, <laughs> that crashed the stream yesterday? It's carbon nanotubes anyways. So it's it's basically, it's like, it's something crazy. Like a hundred times as strong as steel and 10 times as light, or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it's like a hundred. Anyways, it's way stronger than like the strongest steel we have, but way lighter. So you can make cars out of Bucky paper. You can make airplanes out of Bucky paper. And imagine an airplane, most of the gas that an airplane uses is consumed from um because of its because it's so heavy it's a really heavy plane planes are heavy as hell and there's all those people on them and stuff like that so they're even more heavy and that uses a lot of fuel and um the if if airplanes were made out of bucky paper if cars were made out of bucky paper they would use something like 30 percent of the total fuel that they're using now or something like that yeah it's 10 times stronger than steel but anyway, so we have the technology to build the, these things. They're called carbon nanotubes, and they're extremely strong. They're made out of carbon, and they're extremely strong bits of, I guess, are they molecules? I guess there's they're little, they're little molecular structures or whatever called carbon nanotubes, and you put them all together, and you get a sheet of Bucky paper that's like way stronger than steel and super duper light. What's up, weed a bit? How you doing, man? Welcome to the stream. Bafu. Bafu. All right, so in this area here, the ZXL. I'm currently giving it a value of 3.0 and I wanted to give it a ZXL of five or three. So I don't know, 50 divided by three. Let's just do it like that, 166.66 times the bounce height. Optimizing game code, nice man. 
I'm just uh, writing a little code for this uh, boss here. This is a boss where you'll um, you're gonna fight this guy right. This is this is not gonna. I'm gonna play the game, but it's not gonna show the right boss. Anyways, when you get the sword, then this one boss guy warps in, and you have to fight him. But anyways, I'm testing out something here with the grass, just to make sure it still works. Come on, give me an item. Nothing, no love. Nothing. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, did I can't that can't have been right. Oh, 50. Sorry, that's 16. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. What game are you working on right now? Sorry if I asked that already. Yeah. All right, so we're ready to do it. We're ready to do this thing right here. It's called Platform Chaos? Cool, man. Awesome. Is it a platformer then? All right, so now we can go back to these explosions and add some bounce to the health you get when you pick, when the enemy dies, lost dies. System where it creates an item for every one of these explosions. I love that there's this way so much, so much extra health when you ever you beat a boss now. What's up, Ferk? Oh, the standing on the grass platform. Oh, right. Nice, man. Yeah. Sweet. Cool, man. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing more. What's up? What's up? Okay, I couldn't see any of that bouncing. Let's try it. Oh no. Dang. I don't know why I just crashed there. Okay, that was 5.0 bounce. Let's try some mega bounce, like 30. I did. Error. 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 Right here, there's an error. I think it, I, what, what was it that was doing it? Something to do with these life items that just got spawned. Or perhaps the explosions that got left behind or something like that. Created some kind of entity that the game didn't know how to clean up when it was done. <laughs> there we go. Now they're bouncing out. <laughs> That's funny. Let's try a lot less than that, but maybe 10. The shiniest feeling you could have. Wow. 
So it's definitely like an exponential thing, yeah? I mean, I'm putting it in the 10, but it's not giving me 10 for the bounce, but do I go through the pain of making it the math perfect? So, or do I just guess? Guessing is much quicker. Why do I stand? Uh, it's just better for my back and my neck, especially my neck. Oh yeah, they're jumping. They're definitely jumping out. That's cool. Another command? Yes. Probably. All right, I gave in. I'm drinking a root beer. It's actually a beer. It's actually alcoholic root beer. Not your father's root beer. Yeah, there's, su there's sushi here. There's sushi in our fridge. So exciting. Man, this is a cold beer on a cold day. I'm calling it a beer, but it's actually a root beer. That's wrong. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right, this guy, one thing about him is that he, when he's idling, the art is a little off. I think it's this animation here. Yeah, that whole shine is just so wrong. So it's there, next frame is down. Next frame, it doesn't go all the way down. Stay down. That one, whoops. There we go. There, yay, look at him. He looks a lot better now. In fact, I almost, I'm tempted to make this triangle thingy better, but I think I'll save that for later. Render video. It too bright. Why did it make it too bright?
did it propagate the, the first frame or something? does it propagates all those opacities Better. Sort of. What was that? Ah, the end of it. What's up, Platform Labs? It's going well, man. How about you? Man, some part of his animation seems wrong, but it's really hard to tell. Man. Let's look at the individual frames. Maybe that'll help. It's so hard to tell. It's like blurring it all out. Death. Idle, maybe idle needs to be a little less. My capacity, 10%. Alright, there's this cool noise where you pick up an item, and I wanna you I wanna do the same kind of thing for dropping an item but reverse. I think that'll be cool. Get audition open. I think it sounds called pickup item or something. Yeah, pickup. Maybe life. Oh, where? What noise is played when the player heals a little bit? Oh, heal one or pick up, of course. Let's try. It. Let's get pick up open. And 
and heal one. Try this one reverse. This one too. <laughs> That's funny. Blew, blew, blew. And if we, uh, I think there's already, is there a drop? There is a drop item. Hmm. No, 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 no. So I'm thinking. Peer, peer, peer. Maybe a little less volume than this existing sound effect here. Alright, I like it. I like it. Let's try it. Pick up drop. This is like the drop noise. Drop out wave should work. And when we're, we're like putting all of these items on the ground. Actually, let's try it with create with area creates bounce item. Or if it's bouncing. Oh yeah, this needs to be if bounce height. Profile, but this thing doesn't have a profile. All right, yeah, let's give it the same kind of thing. So using the player's property list, we'll do drop, pick up drop. Oh, we already have drop. Let's call this one drop item. We got drop. Oh, here it is. Drop item. Drop item. I think this entity we're referring to is E. Yeah, that's the trans ED, so that's definitely the player. Drop, one last one, drop item. All right, so now, yeah, the player has a drop, wave, and let's try it with every single item ever dropped with the bounce height.
sweet. I like how it waits a frame before it before it gives you um the next sound effect. Bafu. Okay, so from a, from a game mechanic standpoint, it sucks. The only part that sucks about this is that the player is trapped in this room still. So we need a, a, some way to detect that the enemy has died. Before there's there's two ways to basically open up exits from a from if they're blocked off. Like right now, this this exit is totally uh, blocked off. Uh, the existing way was to make it so the player had to pick up an item. And that would open up the, the existing uh, walls or whatever. But that doesn't work for this guy because there's no specific item he drops. So there needs to be a different way that it opens up these exits. So how is he going to do it? Hmm. Hmm. Well, there's already something that actually opens up exits. Locked doors and things like that. And that's in the AI system. Right. That's probably, okay, if I were to do it that way, I would want to start doing it the proper way and put it, make it data oriented. So I would somehow need to specify like maybe in the guy, in the guy's behavior. Yeah, maybe it should do that. It's like when you kill the Roz mini boss, right? Sequence something. Sequence die. If dead open exits or something like that you know that would probably be the I was that would be a I would probably make it proper right this is all all the things I want to do when an enemy dies can be done with the if dead command hmm Hmm, quest system? Yeah. That's a good idea too. See I don't wanna I don't want the one thing I don't want to do is create more than one way to do something. Because that always will confuse me later on in the future. I'll be like, which way which way should I do it this time? That's always a bad thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me see there how it's doing it existing though, with the existing code in the system where it like unlocks exits and stuff. It counts the number of living foes. And then if foe count is like, yeah, here, this unlocks doors, opens containers. Right. But see, that doesn't work for these other guys. Because I want the player to have to pick up certain items from some bosses, you know, like some bosses drop. Hmm.
Let's see if it even works though. Oh, boogie. There you go. I like this thinking right here. Now, now you've taken my existing system and really just made it so there's really only one way to do it, which is way simpler. I like this. Or having prerequisites, yeah. Right, 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 yeah. The Yeah, the story system has that right now. So the story system has requirements, like for example, for the sword two story element to run, it has to have the sword already. Or for this sword boss guy here to even appear, he has to have the sword. So similar there. I mean, I guess there could be a... Uh, we could do it with a story element too. <laughs> Man, too many ways to do it. But anyways, it would go something like sword boss dead or something like that. Um, if, if we killed, I don't know, I don't know how to represent this yet, but if we killed like the Roz mini boss, then open exits, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bot booze and IRC bot. IRC, man. I'm so glad we still have IRC. One thing I can do in the meantime, while I'm thinking about which way to do this, I like actually I like Boogie Boogie's way of suggesting doing it. He drops an invisible item the size of the room that unlocks exits immediately. I really like that actually. Oh cool, there's irc.net live. Sweet. Yeah, you know what? I really love Boogie's way of doing it. It would just be an item called Unlock Exits. All it does when you pick it up is unlock the exits. Anytime you have a boss that wants you need to unlock the exits when he dies, he drops it. It's a huge item. Let's, let's do it. Let's try this out. It's really simple. Keeps the exact system that was already in place. Oh, yeah. I think, okay, the way it's going to work is, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, it should wait until the entire explosion is done. 
I can work. I can. I can get it to do that. Right now, what's going to happen is Jib is going to be the thing that goes. Jib goes over to the dead body of the the boss, scans it, and produces that item. So yeah, I would need to make it so bosses don't finally drop their item until their explosions are done, and that will make it work nicely. Yeah. High five, dude. High five. Special behavior item. Yeah. Is this the Toe Jam and Earl's style high five right there? <laughs> Health's all equal out. So Aria needs to be able to create this kind of item. <laughs> oh. Technically, it should be should be able to create this. No problem. I don't see why. Oh, frame dot size. We need a frame for this. But 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 why? Why do we need a frame? Ah. Let's get rid of that. That'll make it work now. So that that means that means that items don't require an actual image for them to be created. So this is a totally blank and item. This unlock exits item. Now that'll work. It'll use empty.ping for its image, which is blank, but oh well. Or no, it won't use. Oh, this is a better idea. So this, instead of saying all this business here, So if float height is greater than zero, or not equal to zero, or frame dot size is less than zero, or equal to zero, uh, frame equals empty, there. So now we're explicitly using empty.ping for anything that doesn't have an item frame. That will make it so render the render component doesn't complain or anything. Okay, now Now in the system when we pick up items, we need some special logic for when we pick up uh, um, this unlock exits. Gear system and the item system, two different systems, it's weird. Oh, see all the places I need to optimize the code, make it better, more 
more readable, more maintainable. Pickup item. Top hat is one of those items I thought that oh, it must be K flux item. The flux for items is the thing that Here it is, unlock exits, remove spikes, unlock exits. So if this item is the K item unlock exits, you can just do this. Set a breakpoint here, make sure that's that runs. Quiet day today. Oh, I don't know. What day is it? Is it Thursday? It's Thursday. <laughs> I don't know why that matters, but all right. This behavior with the Roz mini boss. This whole sequence die. This was more of a comment. More of an idea. The same thing with the story. With this whole second sword bot. Oh, I already deleted that good. Yeah, drop the unlock exits, man. Oh, that's gonna need to be a word though. It's gonna need to find that word. Let's hope it works. After this, one of the next things to do for this guy would be to make him have a sweet entry animation where he teleports in and all that. Oh, okay, so it worked. It totally worked, but um, whoops. I just ex exited Xcode. Yeah, that was, that's what I meant. Totally, that's what I meant to do. All right, so the unlock exits item itself needs a really big area.
And he's like, he'd be huge compared to the other guys. So the collision component, we've already got a size. 16, 12 or whatever. Now, if, if this item is K unlock or item unlock exits or whatever. Good night, Ferk. See you, man. We'll set the size to be the entire area. So this is area size. Or, oh. Size equals area size. There. Okay, so now that should make it so you it instantly picks up. And then we'll make it so it only happens after he does all his explosions. And then we'll start working on the teleport. Cheeky. We should be hitting that create item. Actually, no need to set a breakpoint there. There's a better one in system, I believe. No, not there. Story system. Creates the foe, creates item. Hmm. Yeah, it's actually better to just use the other the other function over here to create a breakpoint. Yeah. Oh yeah. Set a breakpoint there. Okay, Let's see if that what happened here. Item life? No, we don't want that. Item unlock exits. Perfect. Size is sixteen by twelve, and we hit this. It should be size equals four twenty by two forty. Oh, but it's position. Its position needs to be zero, zero. Or, yeah, zero, zero.
Yeah, I, yeah, good good question here. I think it is. It's um, the anchor point's actually halfway through the the width, but zero on the Y, and that's to get shadows to line up. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. I think that should be right. This time I want to watch the actual debug um, sprites and all that, the debug info to see what it actually creates on the screen. Should just create a huge, huge item that's really easy to pick up. Oh, it totally works. Yeah, it works. Nice. Yeah, nice, man. Yeah, anchor points, right? Does Cocos have a... <laughs> is this a secret? Dude, this is the best. This is so the best. I know it's like a quiet day and it's like we're we're the only ones talking right now, but dude, that's gonna be so killer. Mars is gonna freak out, man. Mars probably already knows because he's a time traveler, but he's gonna freak out anyways. He's probably he's probably freaking out right now. Yeah. <laughs> Double your BC Warriors instant. Uh <laughs> What's up, Siri? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But it's awesome. What? <laughs> Bot food does the fail pitch. No way. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, dude, that's awesome, right? Yeah, he fail fishes. Oh, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, Bot Fu. Bot Fu. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Oh, your test, right, right, test, yeah. <laughs> Dude, you made the dopest. Bapu is so sweet. What's left on my overall to-do list? Man, way too much to list right now. Yeah, I've been I've been afraid to look at my to-do list for a long time, but there's at least over 200 items on there. Um, what I'm what I'm really focused on right now though is creating a really fun alpha version that people can play at Indie Cup. So Ziri, uh, Songbringer is gonna be part of this this indie little game um, gaming event. Um, it's in San Francisco on December 10th and, um, there's, uh, you can, you can come, it's free. Um, it was like, it did cost money, but now the the sponsors for it have like, um, pledged enough or whatever that, oh, you got the mail already? Yeah. Okay. So anyways, you got the point. So I'm, I'm, I want to make a really fun version of the game to play for Indie Cup. And what I want to do is, is start, start hooking the player a little bit more in the first five to ten minutes of playing the game so right at the very beginning of the game i want there to be a boss fight like a it's not not too hard but not too easy either so right when you pick up the sword you're fighting this guy he warps in right after you pick up the sword he warps in and you fight this um raz enemy this black dungeon ball guy like this guy and um and so there, right off the bat, you've gained the sword and you've learned how to fight. 
right? So imagine that I had just picked up the sword. That was actually a boss fight. Actually, I should change his health back to something reasonable. Yeah, let's put his health back up a little bit. Tease him. Yeah, tease him. Right, exactly. Get, yeah, so the point is to give you a little bit of excitement right there at the beginning of the game, and it kind of teases you a little bit, and you, but you you realize what there is in the game, right? So the thing, the thing that I've noticed from watching friends play this game is that they have tended to kind of get a little bit bored right at the very beginning because there's not that much going on as far as enemies and things like that. So yeah, teasing the player for sure. So I think this will help. I think this will help make the game even more fun right away. And it gives you an idea of what to expect from the game within the first few minutes of playing it. So, I want it so the... So Jib never scans a body... Or doesn't scan the bodies of, of bosses until after the boss has done all of his explosions. That's going to be in health system change HP. Wait, it's just K okay, render unscan foe. Yeah, okay, here's the one place where it adds this render unscanned foe. That's only if there's no boss in. Which I'm not sure if any of the bosses are even using that anymore. Drop boss. Oh, drop boss does have one. Hmm. Yeah, kind of like this. If explosion size. Isn't zero. Thanks, man. Good night, Ziri. Thanks for stopping by. So um, what I'm doing here now is I'm making it so that enemy, boss enemies can be scanned, but only after they've done all their explosions. So we get the actual id, we add on this unscanned foe, and this time we don't remove the render component from bosses. Let's see if that works. And I'll turn on debug so we can see the the frames of everything so we can see whether it's whether it's working or not. What? 
this crash reflection component really why am I getting crashes all of a sudden I guess because I've never really done this hmm Oh, that's explosion size is zero. Duh. The other one's not zero. Yeah, so every kind of enemy can be scanned. It's just that the boss enemies, they, it doesn't allow Jib to scan the enemy until after he's exploded. Exploded, explodinated, exploderated. Explodified. What's happening? Stop. Run again. It's hammer time. Boom, new, new, new. What the hell? Oh, oh, I know what's up. I know, I get it. I get why there's a crash right here now. It's removing components and it's removing the shadow component. You can't remove the shadow component without removing the render component. Or the reflection component either. Nice, it worked. What's up, Grubuck? Howdy, man. Okay, two things went wrong there, though. One was that the item didn't look like it left. I picked it up. Oh! I know how to fix that one quick. Yeah, pick up item. Pick up item. It needs to delete the item. Of course. Area, delete entity. Item ID. Sweet. Okay, the other problem was that, what was it? Oh yeah, this guy doesn't have a last frame of his release animation or something. What was going on with that? It's like it didn't play the boss's release animation, right? That's probably has to do with the whole explosion size, all the things that go on. with the explosion animation.
Mm, I was just thinking that perhaps I should write this down. Perhaps um, unscanned full flag should be a part of health component. Besides, health component is the thing that owns items anyways. Yeah, I really think this should be a whole warning, warning to do. Thanks again, Pedro, for the to do. I also learned out that you, in Xcode you can do this, to do something, 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 something. <clears throat> yeah, all right, Pedro. See you, man. Good night, good night. And then once you've defined a to-do like that, you can you can go, you should be able to see it somewhere. Where is it? Oh, health system change HP, where are you? It didn't work. This worked last night, what the hell? Maybe because I, I didn't do that. No, it didn't work, what the hell? Last night this worked. You could just type comma comma or any kind of comment with the word to do in it became something in your Xcode list up here, but it's not working right now. Anyways, we do have a warning. I might do that right now actually, making unscanned foe part of that component because the enemy, Wait, what the hell is going on with his animation? He should run. Oh, see, we've got explode. Ah. Okay, this needs to get smarter. It's running the animation called explode, but we should only run that if the entity has that in its profile. Yeah, Visual Studio has one too. Um, man, I wish Azimris was on here because he was talking about it yesterday. Um, there's something where you can just, you can get a whole list of all your to do's, which is what I wish Xcode had. Cause it did, Xcode did put your to do list in your, in this thing. But how often do you go to this? And there's no way to go and list all of those at once. So I guess one way you could do it is just use that, you know, just use this finding files or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure Visual Studio's got it. Yeah. Yeah, so if we have the animation explode, really simple, right? If we have the animation explode, run the explode animation. There, that should be better this time. So, uh, so two things should be fixed. One, it should delete the item that unlocks the exits. And two, when it explodes, it should end up on the last frame of his death animation rather than trying to run the explode animation, which this entity doesn't even have. I think this is, it runs the animation somewhere else. Here, here's the death anima animation right here. Key release, 
plus skin, play the sound, run the animation re release. Okay, he should not have an explode animation. Yeah, no explode. No exploding for you. Yeah, and this has a release zero, which means it never runs it again. I don't know what was going on here. This should only run it once and then stop at the end. Cool. Yeah, he does not have the exploding. Oh. That time it worked? Oh, it's just view task list. Nice. Oh, you know what would really help debug this? If I make it so there is no small explosions going on at all, except for the sound. It's working. Kept this guy. Cool. It worked that time. I don't know why it didn't work that second time I, or the first time I tested or whatever. But yeah. Works now. Let's confirm it. Let's confirm the okay, so this is gonna be the end of the stream here. I'm done. Gotta get some dinner. Some sushi. Sushi in my belly. So I'm gonna run this one last time. I'm gonna set the health of this guy really high. I think 12 is pretty, actually 12 might be a little too much. 10 is still pretty high. So I'm gonna fight this guy with the, my headphones on and the Xbox controller. Let's see how he is to, how he is to fight. Oh, damn, Jayliss. I'm hiding, you can't see me. Always goes defensive. All right, 
cool. Mechanically, that worked. It was actually fun to fight him. There's a few things, of course, to keep on improving. One, you know, he needs a diagonal movement for his for his projectiles. Yeah, I think I saw this last night. Yeah, so many explosions, right? Uh, so yeah, that um. Also, he's he needs to teleport in. Like, see, this whole scene needs to happen where the screen shakes and um. And you know, you say something like, "Oh, what's going on? Why is the door locked? The door locks." You're stuck in here, this guy teleports in, you fight this boss. So anyways, there's still some work left to do to make this scene here more interesting, more fun, and more story driven too. But I'm well on the way, the, the behavior's working, so this is an enemy you're gonna fight right after you, very, the very beginning of the game where you pick up the sword for the very first time. You have to fight this guy, you're locked in this room, and um, so that's it. I'll continue working on this tonight. And I'll be back tomorrow. So thanks again for joining, everybody.